This is Nagoya University, a leading university in Aichi Prefecture. Here, researchers are looking for ways to save energy for railways. Let's go find out. I went to see Jun Suda, who specializes in electronics. I asked him what he is studying. I'm doing research on power semiconductors. Power semiconductors are the tiny electronic switches that can precisely control high voltages and huge electrical currents. Why use electronics to manage electric power supplies? If you use them well, it can save a lot of energy. So how do railways use power electronics to save energy? The electronics inside what is known as an inverter device can vary the frequency of the alternating current to control the rotation speed and torque of the train's motor. This minimizes wasted energy. Because it's actually inside the pathway of the electrical current, the semiconductor material needs to be highly reliable. But silicon semiconductors don't perform efficiently at high temperatures. A new material gaining attention is a compound of silicon and carbon, known as silicon carbide. This silicon carbide-based power controller is already being used on several trains. When tested on the Tokyo subway, it reduced power consumption by more than 30%. This is largely due to a regenerative braking system that uses power electronics. When a train accelerates, more current is flowing to the motor via the inverter. Regenerative braking happens during deceleration, when the train has excess forward energy. By reversing the operation of the inverter, the motor functions as a generator. This system recovers energy by converting the train's forward inertia into electricity. Traveling at high speeds would generate too much heat for inverters built with conventional silicon semiconductors. So until now, regenerative brakes couldn't be used to their full capacity. Thus, conventional friction brakes were also used. But silicon carbide is more resistant to heat. This allows regenerative braking across a wider range of speeds, so more energy can be recovered. But at Nagoya University, we're actually studying a wonderful new material called gallium nitride. Gallium nitride is a material with special significance to Nagoya University. It allowed the universities Hiroshi Amano and Isamu Akasaki to share the 2014 Nobel Prize for Physics, along with Shuji Nakamura of the University of California, Santa Barbara. The trio won the award for inventing bright blue LEDs, which led to a revolution in bright energy-efficient lighting. These blue LEDs were made possible by semiconducting gallium nitride crystals. When Amano began his research in the 1980s, gallium nitride crystals were difficult to produce. Gallium nitride crystals are grown on a sapphire substrate. But it was difficult to produce high-quality crystals. The gallium nitride didn't grow properly because sapphire and gallium crystals are different sizes. So a buffer material was added in between. Adding an aluminum nitride buffer allowed Amano to reliably produce gallium nitride crystals. Gallium nitride can withstand much higher voltages and larger currents than silicon carbide. But gallium nitride also has its limitations. Crystals produced with conventional techniques were in fact found to have many microscopic imperfections. These defects could impede performance. For 3 volt LEDs, that isn't much of a problem. But powering a typical train can require more than 1000 volts. This could cause the crystals to overheat and break. Suda is now trying different combinations of materials and different temperatures and pressure levels to produce more resilient gallium nitride crystals. 
also because semiconducting gallium nitride is usually grown on top of an insulating substrate. An electrode can't be provided on the opposite side of the substrate, so electrical current only flows near the surface, not fully utilizing gallium nitride's unique properties. So Suda is working on making the substrate itself gallium nitride as well. That would enable him to place electrodes on both sides, creating a vertical power semiconductor that could withstand higher voltages. These vertical power semiconductors might be used in the high-speed railways of the future. Producing high-performance crystals is still challenging, but we hope to solve all the problems and, in the end, create the ultimate power-controlling device.